friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. This is my mom, Susan. Hi there. And my name is Becky, if you're new, and today we're gonna to be making fire starters. This is something my mom started making two years ago. Yeah, well I first made them, or my children and I made them, either oh. in Cub Scouts yeah. or brownies or campfire girls in preparation for a camp out. I heat my house with a wood stove primarily in the winter, and so my mom has started making them for me. My mom doesn't heat her house with a wood stove, but she still continues to make them for herself because my dad and her go camping a lot. And so it's a great way to get a fire started really, really quickly. So we're going to show you how to make some really easy fire starters. And if you plan to cook on your fire, if you buy commercial ones, they mm. generally have a petroleum product with the wood chips and you can't really cook on that. That makes sense. It's, it's toxic and the smells, you know, the smoke is awful. And I wouldn't mind starting a fire with these and 20 minutes later roasting marshmallows or cooking hot dogs, things like that. That is a very good point. All you need to make these fire starters are muffin tin paper liners, some sort of a pan to put them in. I've had this pan 30 years since homeschooling. It's covered with paint, it's rusted out, it's gross. I've never put food in it, but it works perfect for this. And then a source of wax. Um, these are dollar store tapers that were gifted to me over the years that I don't use. I've got a couple dozen of these. These are secondhand thrift store candles. I can only use the unscented ones because when you use the scented ones, it's overwhelming when you melt it. It's, and then when you go to burn it. Yes. We tried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in the fireplace? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Becky found Ikea candles to be the cheapest. This is $2. Yeah. I have in the past purchased this at Winco paraffin for use for canning and jellies and things like that. I've used it in a pickle, um, but secondhand store, I can't, whatever, whatever candles you're not going to use that are unscented work perfect. Now I had to buy hamster bedding <laughs> because I'm not a farmer. And I said, oh, Becky, this is all I have when I arrived. She said, well, I have chickens. Yeah, so I have a lot of it. So I just went out and got some chicken bedding, but whatever. Yeah, just wood chips. That yeah. works fine. Cheapest. Evolution of the process. We first did it in a microwave with my old uh, measuring cup that's so old that there's no measurements on it anymore. Once you use something to do this, it's sacrificed for this process because I would never be able to get this probably clean enough to use it for food. So, but this is very slow. This is very slow. You have to do it in the microwave and the chopstick for stirring it. And it isn't good, a good conductor of heat. And so it cools off very quickly in here. So my next option, uh, after I made, you know, several batches that way, is I went to the thrift store and I made myself a double boiler. This is the pan with the wax. This was the pan with the water. They didn't fit snugly. I didn't have to have a rack. But the, the problem with this was it doesn't pour smoothly. I mean, it pours smoothly, but it runs back down the pan. As you can see, there's wax build up on the outside of the pan. Well, when you put that wax back in the hot water, it explodes with bubbles. The boiling, I don't know what it is, but it explodes and then it spatters wax all over your stove. I have mentioned before I'm not a fan of big messes, hence the paper grocery <laughs> sacks rather than to have to chisel the wax off or on the stove. So I was at my hairdresser's and we were talking about making candles and such and she said she bought a bunch of stuff at, at the secondhand store a couple of boxes of candle making kits and I asked her how do you melt the wax that doesn't take forever or spatter all over your stove and she said the box came with an old tea kettle and look at this we're gonna try it this way she said because this is a better conductor of heat it stays hot in here longer so the first thing we do is make a double boiler I've never done this before I've heard of it it's just a wad of foil to use as a rack to prevent the bottom of this pan to be on the bottom of that pan. There we go. We want that water to boil and then simmer. We want, we want to be able to melt this wax. As, oh, this one did come from Goodwill. <laughs> we want this wax to melt as quick as possible. 
So we're just gonna drop that chunk in there. I have my trusty chopstick with to stir it with. And keep in mind that this is messy with wax. So this is the pot holder that has been designated and stays in that box with the supplies. It's coated with wax. I wouldn't really even want to put it in my laundry. It's so nasty. Um, so use a pot holder that's already burned or stained beyond uh, so you don't end up sacrificing a good one. So we just let that sit there and melt and yep. then we'll go to the next step. I thought we were going to have to chop all this wax before we put it in here and my mom was like, nope, just plop the whole entire pillar candle right in there and just that easy. So that definitely saves a huge step than the way that my brain would have thought to do it. So I'm gonna turn this up until the water heats up because that probably is gonna take a few minutes to melt all that. Once the wax is melted and you can add more wax to it and it'll melt faster than the initial wax melting because the, you're putting it into the hot wax. When working with these chips, when I do it at my house, I have rugs around my island, between my island and my cabinets, so it's softer to stand on. But when I'm working with these chips, you'll notice that they have little curls and edges. And what happens when they fall down onto looped carpet mm -hmm. is they are impossible. They won't even vacuum up. You've got to get down on your hands and knees and pick each one out. So if you're going to plan to do this, I suggest you move your, your uh, kitchen rugs away from your surface. And we're going to pack this in as tight as we can so that it uses less wax and more Chip. chips because then we use it as a fire starter it burns longer and these have started campfires when the wood is wet when it's raining these are wonderful if you camp actually I've seen these fire starters very similar at the campground camp store and you know how much they want for them five bucks each each. That's it's a, a lot. Captive, a captive <laughs> audience. Last year was our first year heating our house with wood, the wood stove almost exclusively. And we were new to buying wood and we bought pretty wet green wood. And we were able to start the fire with these because when we were trying to use just like little kindling and paper and stuff, it was almost impossible to get our fire started until my mom started making us these. We do a family tradition on Christmas Eve where we do a candlelight service and sing carols around the Christmas tree. So I decided, you know, these are too small. So I went through the box and pulled out the ones that were all too small to use a second time. And I'm just going to add these in. Now, you notice that the wicks are there. It doesn't really matter when the, the wicks can be included in the fire starter because they're just going to burn anyway. They're starting to melt in there just a little bit. Okay, this is hot. I'm going to use this so it doesn't drip on her floor. Oh, this pours a lot better than my pan did. We put red wax in there. Some of the tapers in with a big white candle. That's why it's red. Let's see how much we have in there. We don't want to pour it all out because we want to keep the base with a, uh, an amount of liquid to melt it faster. And my poor little chopstick isn't long enough to get in this kettle to the bottom. So we're going to use one of the tapers to stir with. Oh yeah, it's melting good. In the three muffin tins we already poured a little bit of wax in, we're adding even more chips to it so that we can get this packed as tight as possible. We want as many chips in there as possible. We got about uh, two or three inches of melted wax in there, so we're going to pour some more. This is the way to go. I'm telling you it's easier than the glass because it melts faster than in the microwave with the glass measuring cup. It's way easier to pour than from my double boiler. And, whoops. If it, if it goes over and outside, you just scrape it up and put it in the middle as it cools. I can link all of these things down in the description box, but honestly, you can get all this stuff at Goodwill if you want to try to do this very economically. We're going to take the first ones we made out. We're going to just put them over there to cool completely. So they're not completely cooled, right? Yeah, they're warm. Um, we're going to pile them next to each other so that they don't open up and spread out anymore. 
Oh, oh, this is two cups. But we're doing this because we only have the one muffin tray. Right. And we're going to continue to make these. We're going to fill these up, and we're just going to keep making them as we go. Here's my other tool. It came in a uh, gift box. It's covered with wax. It stays in the kit for making fire starters. And these make great gifts. If you have people in your life that heat with wood or are campers, I have made these up. The first batch I made for Becky and Josh, I had this really cute little wooden box and um, I filled it with these and put a ribbon on it and it was the cutest thing ever. This is a good idea if you want to make these when you see holiday muffin tins that are on sale for muffin cups. Muffin cups that are on sale for, you know, 10 cents or whatever. Then you're not using your ones you buy full price. You might notice that the wax is a lot less red. That's because we've used all the red pillar or the red candlesticks and now we're using the white pillars. We've got a system down. My mom's working on melting the wax and I'm managing the sawdust. Once you do the first pouring of wax, we stuff more chips in and then we pour more wax on top of that. We ran out of muffin tin liners and we wanted to make more fire starters because we had all the stuff out. The kitchen was already messy. We might as well make a ton of them. And so we decided we were going to try using egg cartons and this worked really, really well. We probably will do this again. Once they cooled about 80%, I went ahead and I cut the egg cartons then. I tried cutting them first and we tried to fill them with wax, but the wax spilled all over. So definitely stuff your egg cartons with your wood chips, pour the wax in, pour more chips in, pour more wax in, let it cool about 80% and cut it. I cut it into two egg carton section each. If you're going to make them for a gift, I highly re recommend making mm -hmm. these because they're cuter. Yeah. But I actually think these are going to be just as functional. In fact, if you're trying to start a big fire, you could make two different, light it in two different spots. That's true. Break that apart, light it in two different spots. This is the basket I keep by my wood stove where I keep my fire starters in and these egg carton fire starters worked just as well. I've already used them and I have to say super great. So this was a fun project. I don't remember helping my mom ever doing this before and it's something that we probably will do together again because we had a great time. This is more than enough fire starters to get me and my mom through 2022. That was pretty productive. If you want to watch me cook on my wood stove, I have a couple videos, so I will leave them up here and you can go enjoy those. If you want to see me out in the garden, I'll leave a couple garden videos down here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope you enjoyed watching us make these. These are my mom's kind of recipe. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, doesn't this represent a lot of warm, cozy nights? That's true. And some really tasty marshmallows and dogs on the campfire. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys. Good to see you again.